Fate is a Funny Thing by Tangled Forever, Chapter 9, The End of the Chapter, but not the Story. The walk to Headmaster Grimm's office was a quiet one, consumed mostly with observing the extensive damage that littered the hallways. The mere sight of it was proof in spades that her mother was indeed a force to be reckoned with. So much so the Raven could only imagine how long it would take to restore Ever After High to its former glory. Yet, somehow, in spite of everything, on top of her near demise, the blooms of change had already begun to emerge from the ashes left in the evil queen's wake. Students smiled and waved to her as she passed them in the corridors, pausing in their own conversations to wish her good health. The young sorceress felt her cheeks flush at the sudden attention, but couldn't help but smile regardless. Funny how fate works sometimes. Finally reaching her destination, Raven opened the large oak door. Headmaster Grimm sat on his desk, engrossed in various piles of paperwork. Every so often, he'd hold up a single sheet of paper, compare it with the others, and then set it down and scribble a note in its margin. His eyebrows knitted together. Because of Mum, I'll bet. Raven waited a moment more, then sauntered into the room. Headmaster! Milton Grimm sat straightened on his desk, his fitful eyes never quite meeting hers. Miss Queen. There was so much he wanted to say. So many mistakes he had yet to make right. He sat there for a moment, lips slightly parted, but the fragments of words caught on his tongue. The headmaster eventually cleared his throat, settling with a simple, What can I do for you? Raven stood in front of his desk, fiddling with the edge of her nails. I know it's not visiting day, but would it be okay if I checked on Mum? Just so she knows I'm okay after the whole, uh, apple thing. Y- yes, certainly. Still slightly shaken, Milton took out a clipboard from his desk, then held it up for her to sign. Need I remind you, do not touch the glass. Raven put the pen down, rolling her eyes in amusement. Oh, please. The headmaster pushed the button under his desk, and she began the familiar trek up the school's tallest tower comforted at least by the glass shield that restrained her mother. However, no sooner did she step away from the stairwell, her mother's beaming face appeared in the mirror. There's my little blackbird! Raven was, to say the least, taken aback by the greeting. A greeting far, far too cheerful for someone who had just been put back into the near impenetrable prison that was the mirror realm. Hey, Mum! Oh, how beautiful! The evil queen gushed, eyes shining with pride. Not even a poisoned apple can keep a queen down for long. Raven shuffle shifted uncomfortably, but not from embarrassment. As much as she'd rather avoid mirrors than gaze at them, she wasn't against being called beautiful. Her father had done so her entire life, and she wasn't a stranger to her friends complimenting her wicked style. Though they were few and far in between, There were times before they started dating when even Dexter had worked up the courage to tell her she was as well, and each time had her smiling for hours. Coming from her mother, it was completely different. Unlike her father, friends and her boyfriend, her mother didn't simply say she was beautiful. She said she was beautiful, then followed it up by mocking others, especially Apple, or trying to prompt her down the path of evil. Given the choice, she'd rather neither. Hesitant to respond, she decided to change the subject. Are you okay in there? Oh, it's not so bad, I suppose. Her mother admitted before adding enthusiastically, Somebody left a sandwich in here. Her mother could only blink, baffled to see her mother, her evil, conniving mother, get so excited about a discarded sandwich. Her enduring sanity was truly a testament to her brilliant, albeit scheming, mind. The evil queen's face softened, her eyes suddenly tender. I'm royally proud of you, Raven. Something about those words caught Raven off guard, and a hopeful smile tugged at her lips. Seriously? After all that? You demonstrated your powers are even stronger than before. Her mother's eyes seemingly unusual bright her excitement growing with every passing word. Why, I didn't even know it was possible to break your own sleeping curse. 
And just like that, her face fell in dread. No wonder her mother was taking everything show so well. She was utterly clueless. Raven vaguely heard her mother's voice as she continued, likely praising her natural talent for trickery and deceit. But she had long since stopped listening. If she knew nothing about the kiss, then she knew nothing of Dexter. Suddenly, the min mirror's thick window glass was less of a comfort than it was a mere moment ago. In time, she would learn the truth one way or another. And when she did, you're more like me than you realise. Like it or not, you can't escape your destiny. We'll see. I have to go, Mum. I'll visit you soon. With that, the young sorceress turned and walked away, but her mother's voice was quick to follow. I love you, Raven. Now, go and show them what an evil queen can do. Raven stopped in her tracks taking a moment to process her words. It was a bittersweet goodbye, a promise of love, tarnished by the same disregard that had been straining their relationship for years. She wanted to tell her about the match, but something held her back. Perhaps it was the knowledge that Dexter was there, or perhaps maybe the slightest bit of resentment at her inadvertent poisoning Whatever it was, she needed time to heal. She was, as always, open to the idea of a relationship with her mother, but she wasn't willing to t with open arms. Only time will tell. I love you, she finally replied, before disappearing into the shadowed stairwell. Raven all but counted her footsteps until she made her way down to the Dragon Games arena, briefly noting how each stair had been so carefully carved from the cliffside the sound of her mother's voice seemed to echo in her mind. Each word blurred into the next in one infernal tone. You broke your own sleeping curse! Those, weren't the, those hadn't been her exact words, but the implications were there. The implications that churned and knotted her stomach, ached in her chest, and drew a thin layer of sweat to her palms. A sudden rumble of thunderous applause shocked her from her thoughts. The crowd had noticed her arrival before even she did, and were even quicker to welcome her. Restless dragons lined the centre of the field, near a single spot left vacant for Nevermore, and all chirped in excitement as they waited for the final rider. Apple smiled warmly at her, holding Brayburn at the ready, and just above them, in the centre of the stadium platform that linked the field to the grandstands, Dexter was down on one knee, tending to a certain purple Labrador-sized dragon. Raven released a breath she hadn't realised she had been holding, her shoulders suddenly looser than they had been mere moments ago. Waving to the others as she passed them, she walked across the field and up to the grandstands, her lips tugging into a, a smile when she saw what her dragon was eating. Fire apples, huh? Dexter blushed a little. I remember you saying they were her favourite. Did everything go okay with your mum? Uh, yeah. Yeah, she's fine. I'm fine. Dexter's eyebrows instantly arched, his eyes deep and focused. For a moment, he simply watched her, then stood up and took her hands in his. Come on, Ray. You know I know you better than that. D Raven sighed, not quite meeting his gaze. Mum doesn't know about our kiss. She thinks I woke myself up with my magic. Ah. I take it she isn't going to be too happy when she finds out the truth? Yeah. Hey. Dexter tilted her chin up and looked her in the eyes with an intensity that threatened to melt her like a fire in the Snow Queen's castle. We'll get through it. We've made it this far, haven't we? Raven chuckled, giving his hand a gentle squeeze. Yeah, I guess we have. Dexter smiled back, pressing a tender kiss to her forehead. Come on, everyone's waiting. Letting go of her hands, Raven walked over to her dragon. Ready, girl? Nevermore answered by bounding round in circles, then transforming into her, her full dragon size, leaving her rider to laugh at her antics as she climbed onto her scaled back. Dexter chuckled as well before handing the reins up to his sweetheart. Okay, is that everything? Raven smirked, that playful, telltale smirk that never failed to steal his breath. Hmm, almost everything. Huh? 
What? Whoa! With no further warning, the young sorceress levitated him up to meet her eyes, her hands glowing a pale lavender as he hovered in midair. Dexter opened his mouth to speak, only to be met with her am amethyst eyes and softened smile. Her hold on her spell never wavering, she reached out to grab his scarf and pulled him to her lips. A collective mixture of oohs and ahs rippled across the grandstands. Yet the noise was muffled by the pounding in his chest. He floated there for a moment, frozen in time and space, then softly deepened the kiss, briefly forgetting about their several hundred strong audience. How he had changed in these past few hours. Her aching lungs pleaded for air. Raven reluctantly pulled back, then carefully lowered him to his feet. Dexter took a step back as his feet touched the ground, his smile a mixture of love and pride. Go get him! The young queen smiled at her boyfriend, and then flew her dragon onto the field, beside the rest of her team, coming face to face with a certain beaming opponent. Hey! What took you so long? Apple teased. Let's do this! Raven grinned in response, a newfound fire in her eyes as she got into position. Ready when you are! The other riders followed suit urging their coloured steeds into the air. One by one, the dragons left the ground. The sound of a whistle echoed across the stadium, and the ball pissed through the air mere moments later. Raven tugged on Nevermore's reins, closely followed by Apple, then caught the ball with ease as it began its descent. Back on the ground, Dexter watched from the stands, his lips curved into a soft smile as he whispered affectionately to his one true love. That's my girl. His words never reached her ear, but somehow she could almost sense them. Raven spared a quick glance at her roommate, the ball still firmly clasped in her hands, and almost laughed at the simple irony. Somehow, by some ludicrous twist of fate, the poisoned apple that had haunted her darkest dreams had granted every wish from her lightest ones. The light and the dark had finally been unified as she and Apple flew into the sunlight, a brilliant new chapter in her story began. From the reserve benches, Maddie spat out her drink in a dramatised fashion and gave a pointed glare upwards. Wait, upwards? Oh dear. You're ending it there! Ugh. Madeline Xylophone Hatter, you know you're not supposed to talk to the narrator. Hey, I've been good as golden geese up until now. Fabel Poison, my best friend, and I said nothing. You were half asleep and you didn't even know what had happened. That's not the point. <sighs> Honestly, Maddie, can you really not wait until the sequel? No. <laughs> well, friends, the Hatter has spoken. Looks like we've got a party to get to. <sighs> End of story. Hi, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. can see Maddie did there. <laughs> And that is the end of this story. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. It's just, oh my days, I love that. A nice little tender hooks there. I don't know if there ever was a sequel. Let me just check. Uh, nope, no sequel. Okay, never mind. I would have read it, I promise you guys. But God, I love that so much. I just do. That's one of my favourite stories. And Ever After High was unironically really really good if you guys haven't watched it i recommend it's over but several people are still hoping that it will come back and i honestly would be there for it as long as they didn't go the full winx saga netflix reboot thing they did i mean as a story on its own the winx club reboot wasn't bad but as a reboot of winx club it was a terrible adaptation anyway <laughs> sorry i feel very passionately about these things um, remember to like, comment and subscribe, hit that bell to get notified for when I might upload and yeah, remember to have a day, good day, night or whatever time zone you're in. Bye my guys, gals and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Bye.